if we consider the ring z2 so it consists of 0 and 1 and uh, if we add 0 2 times then we get 0 in z2 similarly if we add 1 2 times what we get 1 plus 1 which is 2 and 2 is 0 mod 2 so again 2 plus 2 is 0 in z2 so uh, similarly if you add 0 and 1 4 times you will again get 0 or 6 times so you will again get 0 so there is this possibility of such an integer say n if we add any element n times we get 0 right now if we look at the least such integer so here if we were adding any element of z2 twice four times or six times we'll, we were getting zero now two was the least among all these integers so this motivates the definition of characteristic of a ring consider a ring r the characteristic of r is the least positive integer n such that nx is zero for all elements x in r this means that x plus x plus x so on added n times is 0 and this holds true for all elements x and r here n is the least positive integer that satisfies this condition so among all the integers that satisfy nx is 0 for all x and r n is the least positive integer okay now it is quite possible that for a ring no such integer exists so that ring is said to have a characteristic 0 also the notation used for characteristic is char r char r now um, we can note that the ring of integers has characteristic 0 okay so char z is 0 uh, now we saw that zn has characteristic n uh, now this is a finite ring and this is an infinite ring uh, for example the ring r of real numbers that also has characteristic 0 because such an integer does not exist now it is quite possible that for a for an infinite ring the characteristic is non-zero so for that consider the ring z2x So this ring consists of all the polynomials that have coefficients from Z2. That is, it is con it consists of elements of the form a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus so on plus a k x to the power k. Here k belongs to natural numbers. Okay, so. Uh, now and these ais belong to z2 so this is an infinite ring clearly but it has characteristic 2 okay so the characteristic of z2x is equal to 2 because if we add any element twice that would give us 0 because the coefficients are added modulo 2 when a ring contains the unity element, it becomes easy to determine the characteristic of the ring. Let's see how. So we consider a ring R with the unity element 1. So the possibilities for the additive order of the ring R is that either it could have finite order or it could have infinite order. So if the unity element has infinite order, the characteristic of the ring R is 0. If one has order n under addition then the characteristic is n let us see the proof so we consider case 1 when 1 has infinite order so this means that we are talking about the additive order okay so this order is additive so since it has infinite order, so there does not exist any positive integer n such that n into 1 is 0, right? Because if there exists such an integer,
n such that n is n dot 1 is equal to 0 then order of 1 should divide n so this means that order of 1 should be finite but we are given that 1 has infinite order so so we can conclude that there does not exist any positive integer n such that n dot 1 is 0 uh, this clearly means that the characteristic cannot be finite because for the characteristic to be finite uh, n into x should be 0 for all elements x in the ring r but here we are getting an element that is the unity element for which such an n does not exist so the characteristic of the ring r is 0 so now we come to case 2 the case 2 is that the unity element that is 1 has order n the possibilities of the characteristic of an integral domain are just two. It could either be zero or it could be a prime number. So let us see the proof. So if the unity element has additive order infinite, then the characteristic of the integral domain say i, it would be zero by previous result. So this notation is for order of the unity element. So let us assume that order of the unity element is nothing but finite which is say n. So we have to prove that n must be a prime number. Let us write n as the product of two factors s and t where s and t lie between 1 and n. So to prove that n is a prime number, we must prove that either s is n or t is equal to n. Because the prime numbers have only two factors, 1 and itself. So if n has only two factors, 1 and itself, then n would be a prime number. So now since 1 has additive order n, so 0 can be written as n into 1, uh, which can be written as s t times 1, right? Now s into t times 1. This is equal to s times 1 into t times 1 because you can see that 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 added 6 times. This can be written as 1 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 plus 1. Right? So this is 1 added s times and this is 1 added t times. So this is equal to 1 added s into t times. This is the usual multiplication of integers. So now we get that 0 is equals to s times 1 into t times 1. So this uh, since i is an integral domain so either s times 1 should be 0 or t times 1 should be 0 and hence we get that either s should be equal to n or t should be equal to n because n was least integer with the property that n into 1 is 0 and s and t are nothing but less than or equal to n so either s should be equal to n or t should be equal to n and hence n must be a prime number. 1 has additive order n means that n is the least positive integer such that n into 1 is 0. Here this means that 1 plus 1 plus 1 added n times this is 0. Okay n times. So I consider x plus x plus x added n times this is nothing but nx we have to prove that this is equal to 0 so i can write nx as n times 1 dot x because 1 is the unity element so 1 dot x is equals to x so i can write this as 1 dot x plus 1 dot x added n times right so now 
since dot distributes over plus so I can write it as 1 plus 1 plus 1 added n times dot x this is nothing but n into 1 dot x and since n into 1 is 0 so this is 0 dot x which is again 0 by the properties of rings so since x in r was an arbitrary element so nx is 0 for all x in r and hence the characteristic of the ring r is nothing but n hence we have proved the result let us now prove that if R is a finite ring with m elements, then the characteristic of R divides m. So we let characteristic of R be equal to m. So by division algorithm, we can write m as n q plus R, where q and R are integers, and R is greater than or equals to zero and strictly less than m. Now, uh, because the order of R is m. And since R is an abelian group, right? So by Lagrange's theorem, for any element x in R, mx is 0 because the order of an element divides the order of the group. And uh, here, x is any arbitrary element, and m is the order of the group R. So this implies nq plus r times x is 0. We can write it as nq times x plus r times x is 0. Now uh, nq times x can be written as q times nx plus rx equal to 0 because the characteristic of r is n so nx is 0 so this can be written as rx is equals to 0 now since x is any arbitrary element so this condition holds true for all elements x and r now because n was the characteristic of the ring r so this cannot hold true for a positive integer which is less than n right so the only possibility is that r has to be 0 which implies m is equals to nq and hence n divides m so the characteristic of the ring divides the order of the ring